Okay, hello YouTube. Uh, it is me, the Norwegian artist Knut Andre Lixola. Uh, as you can see, this is a time-lapse video and I just want to show you how I do things and talk about it at the same time. Because the original video here is like seven and a half hour and it may be a stretch to think that people will sit through it and uh, watch it. Some of you actually do. But as you can see, I'm starting here on a, on a canvas uh, with a wash of uh, turpentine, uh, ordinary turpentine, and uh, a Rohrenbach from uh, Old Hall. And I uh, just start to uh, bring out the light and uh, dark. I kind of, uh, as you can see, I'm actually drawing with the paint. Uh, I, I do not mind I don't want to even understand why people are using charcoal or something like that before they start painting because it's so much easier just to start this way and you kind of start building it as a relief as if you are adding clay to the painting or to the surface in a way if you look at this as a brick wall and you're just gonna add uh, clay or something to build a relief it would be exactly the same principle of course it's a little bit different with uh, oil paint since you are actually also not just doing neons as uh, it will be if you do a relief because then you have to look at how the shadows fall and stuff like that uh, here you can actually also do colors and uh, build uh, directly the colors at once as you can see, it is not perfect. I just sketch it up, and um, uh, as I've been saying before, here you can see I've gone a little further. As I said before, now I do not try to make my sketches perfect, uh, but I noticed in this painting that not doing it more perfectly. Uh, got me into some trouble with me building textures in uh, like the flowers there and in the dress I just started to pile on a lot of uh, textures without any thought of uh, as I say foresight or foresee the future I was thinking like it was a big painting and I noticed that I really need to have a different approach when it comes to small paintings like this because usually I do very big stuff and when I do big stuff you can actually have a much uh, you have a much better uh, you can do more mistakes and you can correct them more easily but when it's this small it is really hard to start correcting especially when it comes to textures so be a little bit careful with how much you pile on and I will do some more of these small ones and uh, try to think a little bit different and um, see if that will be a, give me a better result as you can see I just keep on uh, I'm actually communicating with with the photograph uh, and just going back and forth, back and forth. I work kind of all over the place. There I go back to the flowers and then I uh, maybe go back to the wall again and back and forth and back and forth. There you, you see, I'm back on the wall. Uh, and I just try to make the whole thing into a, into a more fluid, uh, playful game. And, um, and I just keep adding as you see, uh, building. I pro approximately put in the right colors. Maybe that's also a way to do it, to actually try to get the colors more correct the first time in small paintings like this. And I th thought a lot about uh, Vermeer and his small paintings when I was doing this. and. Uh, I was thinking more and more about going into some of my photo old photographic material and really take a deep dive into uh, into his paintings because 
as I say, I didn't really know what I was doing here. I thought I was thought I, <laughs> I thought that I knew, but I hit the wall, hit my skill wall, as it says. In this video, I will also show you how to uh, use the lasur la or the glazing. How I do it, as you see now, I just wash over the whole thing and I scrape away the oils and I uh, then start to, and I took some paper and washed away in the light areas and then I just start to paint over again. And actually the good thing about doing this is that the color I put on actually then mixes and the oil is also mixing with uh, with the paints I put on. So I don't, don't actually have to add so much. Uh, I don't even I don't even think I add any any medium to the colors directly. I also used retouche um, vernis before that. So when I put on this uh, this uh, thirty percent um, turpentine and um, linseed oil, cooked linseed oil, I um, it uh, and put in the the glazing the glazing color, which is usually a mix of uh, the Kaplak or Alsorin and uh, uh, usually I use the French Ultramarine color because it gives a nice uh, nice tone that I, I really like working with and what happens is that uh, it becomes a little bit sticky because the, the turpentine is evaporating and, and um, the harpix in the, in the retouche furnace um, is kind of gluing it to the surface so it becomes a little bit sticky and when I then go over it again it, uh, it mixes in and it becomes like a glue in a way. If, you, if I only put on the glazing I noticed it becomes too slippery and I get into real trouble. So it's, I find that it's important to put on the retouche furnace uh, before I do the glazing. So that is me. I, I have no idea. Uh, I just things I picked up along the way. I've been doing this for many, many, many years and I have learned gradually how to, from my mistakes, nobody actually taught me how to do these things. So. Yeah, you see here I just put in shadows and then I put in more light and then I put in shadows and there you see I put in a little bit too much uh, texture in the in the bright area there in the here and I got into trouble later because when I was trying to build more um, of the details uh, later these textures started to make conflicts uh, with my corrections and that this only happens it kind of happens in big paintings too but then it, it kind of just more texture more paintedness but in here it became a problem and i as i say i will focus deeper on that next time i do something small as this you can just see i just keep adding 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 and of course, also this very small painting to to get the details right. It was a hellish process. You have no idea how much I was working with this. And sometimes I felt it was finished, and then I just tried to do some more, and I just made a mess out of it. And of course, that isn't in the original video. Sometimes you can see me mess up. But in general, uh, I, I just do segments and then I work for many hours and then I do another segment so you can't really see all the mistakes I do. And that is actually a shame because me screwing up is, might be one of the best ways for you as a viewer to learn how to paint. And that is basically the goal with these videos that I uh, show you things that you can pick up and, and make your own paintings better. The most important thing with painting is that you paint and that you paint all the time. As I talk about in the video a lot, uh, 
the brain is experiencing difficult thing as it would experience pain. So when you do painting and do advanced painting, it is kind of a painful process. So if you're not focused enough, you really have problems getting to start doing it. And there are days when I'm kind of tired or something. I can use hours on just getting to the painting process. And when I then get into it, I can't really stop. So it's quite funny, really. It's kind of a love-hate situation where you have to go to an exam every single day and um, yeah that is why it's also as i talk about in the main video very important to stay healthy and uh, not drink too much and have work time and keep your economy in order so you have what's called fuck your money you can actually say no to stuff and have the money to do what you like not what you have to do which I have had to do a lot actually because my expenses are high and stuff like that so keep your economy in check and do stuff like that anyway here you just see me building more texture you see you see here I, I just went in with a red there and then I tone it down and then I just go over later and I bring it back up again and you see I just keep on piling on the texture uh, more and more and more I just move things around and it's more like um, like uh, as I say like a clay uh, there uh, I put on some more uh, uh, glazing and, uh, I do that many times maybe even between every layer I can't film every this video the main video not this one of course became seven and a half hour long and I didn't even know that until I was finished with it I just knew that maybe I overdid it this time and I'm not even sure that I'm that pleased with that finished product so yeah you know because I did all the mistakes that I did with the with the sketching process and stuff um, here you can just see me you see how I build um, I just kind of tone it up and down up and down up and down up and down and that is that's a funny thing with this it is a uh, people ask why paint well you can say why live why do anything why don't you just buy a lot of chocolate cake and buy a Netflix and just lay around and watch TV series until you die because that would probably be okay if you could live with it uh, it would be a totally waste of life it would be a totally waste of existence and um, for me painting has become not what I do but who I am and um, without it I just get depressed because I'm the kind of person that has to engage with life and, and myself and the flow and everything uh, in a constructive way uh, you see here I, I, I do try here to correct these mistakes where you see now that the textures I put on earlier in in the painting actually making some conflicts and even in the background there when I try to to line up this photograph now it's actually not a photograph it is actually a drawing I got from an ex-girlfriend she's a very sweet girl called Julia she's a brilliant drawer and uh, she's really nice so good luck to her very nice girl anyway uh, that was a digression wasn't it so even when I was going to paint in that in the background there with the lining I got into trouble with the texture I put on much earlier because I couldn't really get that line uh, to stay straight because there was too many lumps in the background <laughs> Maybe that gives a nice paintedness to it, but for me it was really frustrating to having to deal with that. 
so next time I will be way more focused so and also the flowers I was actually planning to go totally detailed and I realized when I have painted on them again and again and again that because of the textures because I put in so thick layers there that I had to go for the more impressionist style and um, yeah and that's that's how you learn to paint um, uh, I remember in the start when I was doing painting I really had no no foresight I could I could not see into the future and predict how my paintings will turn out now I can uh, basically when I do bigger things I can predict how it will work out in the future I can predict how the brush strokes will create a room I'm after I can predict basically quite well how it will turn out and um, I couldn't really do that in this one because it was basically the first time I painted something so small and uh, but I learned so much well I'm not saying that a lot now uh, you can see here I just tried to build more and more of her face and the eyes and everything and the lips was so difficult and that small pencil and that small Ben's pencil there became basically my biggest enemy and my big best friend it lasted through the whole painting and for some reason I uh, still have it actually and I'm doing another one that is a little bit bigger right now actually and I'll post that video in a while hopefully it will be a shorter video but not yeah and I also think I need to get more of these uh, more maybe use a little bit more synthetic pencils or get this uh, what is it called more in Norwegian well there's some with the very expensive the ones you the professional ones you use are used for more gouache and, uh, and uh, gouache and, and uh, water paint so if we can get pencils because when I use the the boar bristle or the pig bristle it gives so much texture because of the way the hairs are that that also creates the problems that I was talking about I, I kind of love this this building part when you just you just keep adding back and forth like this and as I talk about in the main video, uh, when you you see how the rose is built, and I built I build textures around the leaves, so you get the same effect as you do in the, the Rembrandt painting, the Night Watch when the spear is coming out of the painting, and that is actually the way to do it. You just you just build. Because what happens visually for us is when when uh, we see something, our eyes picks up the light first, or the the the, the attention is pinpointed on the lightest areas and the things that are closest to us we see the best and the things that are longer away from us we don't see that well so you have to, so when you build like that you you just build the illusion of physical room and it is as i said in the beginning a physical room like building a relief in clay or maybe even have a have a piece of mar marble and you just start chopping out uh, the motif and that is actually how these people who made these uh, reliefs were thinking they saw surface and they saw the motif and the only thing they had to do was to kind of chop it out on this surface and as uh, uh, 
uh, was it Michelangelo? Or was it? Well, there was one of the, uh, the sculptors who said that I was asked how he actually did it, and he said, "Well, when you had the, the big lump of stone." The sculpture was already in there, it just had to chop away the pieces that was around it. And that is actually how they think and how one should think when one also do painting. You know, when you have the paint the, the canvas in front of you, you're just gonna add you just got the motive is already in there, you're just gonna bring it up, you know, you're just gonna bring out the light and the shadows and and everything and boom, it's there. So, and whatever you do, if you're a young artist or a young painter or a painter at all, stop focusing on on the motive. Uh, don't believe for a second that the motive will make you into an artist because or a painter. Because a good painting is good because it's very nice painted and. Um, how do you how do i measure a good artwork it's basically from how much skill or how good it is compared to what i call my objective standard which is vermeer and rembrandt and all the uh, turner and all the masters and that is what i call my objective standard uh, try to become a, the best painter you can try to study paint try to be honest uh, when you do the work and uh, don't spare yourself don't become a uh, pompous asshole it's very important to keep your feet firmly uh, linked to the ground and um, that is why i always say in my videos that make sure you find a objective standard that is way better than you and something you probably can't even imagine being able to reach like Rembrandt or or these uh, great painters that I find unbelievable almost this is not even human what, what things they could do you see a, a, a sculpture of David and how the hell could he Managed to create something like that. You can, I mean, I, I'm I'm a painter. I learned myself how to use the brush and stuff, and I have a long way to go until I'm even close to what I would call, call a good painter. So uh, I, I'm kind of I'm over average. I can see that I have I'm kind of over average. So and that's a good start. <coughs> I basically have 29 more years to learn uh, and maybe even more if science makes any breakthroughs in the aging process i might even live till until 100 and i can of course uh, manage to become way better than i am now and learn because i'm still learning as a child so make sure that you do not uh, believe in your own myth or try to be an artist or do stuff like that because it will only make you into a narcissistic asshole and it will actually close the doors to self-awareness and to be able to uh, evolve both as a human being and as a painter because making and doing creative stuff links you to the depth of yourself in in the flow and um, if you're an honest person it can actually make you a better person more self-aware more emp empathetic uh, more sympathetic is even more uh, even more uh, important than empathy empathy even a psychopath has empathy that is something you have to have to be able to manipulate manipulate other people so sympathy is actually much better because uh, I don't see the world lacking empathy, it lacks sympathy and um, there's enough emotions out there and it's driving, driving people to do bad things uh, in, the, 
in the light of thinking are doing good things and uh, it's also driving the sociopaths and the psychopaths to being able to manipulate other people so don't go there anyway as as you can see i'm just keep on building and the side there there yeah that one that one that was that was the big biggest problem one of the biggest problem was exactly that line up there and uh, with the cheek there to try to get her face uh, right and I kind of almost succeeded I can see that the mouth is now a little bit difficult now I have to say when I uh, the photograph the, the photo or the, the camera does not pick up the colors so good when I'm making these videos so in reality the skin tones and the, the colors are more like in the photo but I also do see that I didn't necessarily reach total likeness like in the mouth and stuff uh, I might do even a follow-up video uh, where I make one where I only go into deep detail in this one and try to I'm not sure I might do that but I'm gonna do what I usually do I'm gonna put it away for a few weeks and then I'm gonna bring it out again and then I am actually more able to see this piece objectively and often I experienced that I when I got some distance from it I'm more able to uh, judge if it's good or bad or good enough or if I should just move on and try to do a better work next time because having a lot of loose ends is not a good thing I think I have like 30 paintings in my studio which I'm working on big paintings I have a lot of commission works I have uh, all kinds of stuff I'm doing so one should not try not to have too many loose ends because yeah so and this was also a patron giveaway painting as you probably understood now I have a patron account and I'm giving away a painting every month to in my patron giveaway lottery I'm not actually allowed to say that but I'm going to do it anyway so yeah I use the scraper to see that yeah that 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 part there was also one of my nemesis things I couldn't get it right it was so hard to and that was also because of the textures I put in from the beginning it makes it made it so hard for me to to uh, make that right uh, <clears throat> I actually have a good friend called Leandro Cassiano he's a brilliant painter sadly he's not on YouTube but he is um, more skilled in these things so I might ask him a little bit he's also making his own oils from linen seeds and uh, making mediums and stuff so so I might get some new oils to so I can deal with these paintings with that as I did say this is a patron giveaway and um, the one that won it is very happy and this is also <coughs> uh, I will not make paintings like that again for a while the patron has fallen a little bit not grown and these paintings are basically two and a half thousand dollar paintings in a gallery in Norway and right now I'm taking in like nine hundred dollars on patron so it's not really worth it and it also comes <coughs> with a very expensive frame so I have to reevaluate what I give away there but as it grows I will do it again and um, yeah yeah you see I go back and forth and back and forth to this um, and it kind of never ends does it uh, I could probably keep on piling on this painting for <coughs> for a year 
That's so frustrating. Anyway, uh, I'm glad you followed me here to the end. I hope you got something out of this chat. And um, uh, there's also, uh, I show you the painting after this video. And here you can see the finished painting and the textures. And it became quite nice. It, quite, it is um, impressionist type, but I'm quite pleased with it. So, give a thumbs up, leave a comment, and uh, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and welcome back. And here's the painting. And voila! Where is the finished painting? I'm going to show you some details. And yeah. You see, it kind of changes the color. You see now, it becomes redder when I go closer. Because digital camera is kind of, uh, interpreting the colors, and that is a problem always when I'm also making videos. I can't really seem to get the right color stick. I have no idea how to get it right. I have to just have to experiment. Now it was nice to work with it. it was also quite stressful uh, because I met my skill wall, and you can see that in the original file. This is also a patron giveaway painting so if you would like to um, uh, become a patron you can actually become a lucky owner of a painting uh, yeah and um, yeah my studio as usual my big place um, also it's very important that you put the notification bell on and that when I post a video, you actually uh, let it roll, you see it. Uh, it helps up my uh, views and put me into the algorithm. Put them into your playlist, share on social media and uh, leave a comment and yeah, thumbs up and all that stuff. So, if you want to support my channel, as I say, there are many ways to do that, including becoming a patron. And with this, I beg you a fine farewell, and until next video, I see ya.